I'm wearing like all black. I got my autumn wine glasses. I'm ready for Halloween. Let's fucking do it. Hi booktube, I am a Rebecca without my Sarah and today I'm talking about my July wrap up. I'm talking about my July wrap up. The perfect time to be talking about your July wrap up. August 15th. A rough start to July, having a pretty rough start to August, but that's for next month's wrap up, which will probably be like September 15th. The first thing I finished in July is Rat Queens by the, a bunch of people. I, I don't fucking know. This was very, uh, had, had very wonderful. D, D vibes and I'm gonna be talking a lot about D, D in this fucking video. So I really liked this and then I was disappointed because I was like I'm gonna buy the next 10 because I'm like compulsive. I was looking at the rest of them and like the reviews like plummet and like from people that I trust so I'm kind of curious if you have read this series or parts of it or like continued beyond the first one what happens like what goes wrong? I feel like I wasn't getting specifics. I was getting a lot of people saying like the quality was going down, and I'm like, okay, um, let's be honest, um, I'm not that classy of a bitch, so I can take a decline in quality, depending. Let me know if you kept reading this, because it was really delightful, and it was about these four bitches, and they were great. I want more fantasy vibes like this, so if you also have, like, recommendations for something similar, that would be great. Next up, I read the first in the Adventure Zone graphic novels. This is Here There Be Gerblins. And this is an adaptation of a podcast done with three brothers, the McElroy brothers and their dad, Clint. It's interesting to me that I haven't really talked about the McElroys on my channel because uh, we really stand the McElroys in this house. My husband and I are very big fans. We listen to their podcasts. Uh, we watch a lot of their content. I became a fan of them. Uh, two of the brothers, Griffin and Justin, do a series on YouTube called Monster Factory. And it's one of like my favorite things ever in the world. I rewatch them constantly. And I think it's because it gives me vibes of like hanging out with my friends and just like goofing around playing video games and just being ridiculous. And I, I miss those times a little bit. And I still do stuff like that with my husband sometimes, which is great, but it doesn't, you know, as you grow up, you have less time for that. So it, uh, like, I, I love that series for that. I'm just gonna go ahead and link one. They're kind of long, but I don't care. It's some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my damn life. So getting back to the actual content at hand, I did love this. Like, I loved it a lot, but I think most of my love for Here There Be Gerblins comes from the fact that I'm already a fan of theirs, and I was already a fan of the podcast, and I'm familiar with the story. I loved getting little nuggets and little hints that I know kind of come into play later. I've seen a lot of people say that they just thought this was okay, and I think that's really, really valid. And I've also seen people say they tried to get into the podcast after this, and they had a little bit of trouble. And I'm going to be honest, I think I might have as well, but I got into it immediately because I was already a fan of the McElroys at that point. So whether or not I can say this is objectively good, <laughs> that's hard to say. Is it like you have to listen to a podcast and then also listen to these other podcasts to really like it? That seems silly. So I can't say objectively. I cannot. I am completely 100% biased because I fucking love them. And I love these characters and this story. I will say if you felt this was kind of mediocre or it was just like, okay, at this point in the podcast, they were all very new to this whole thing. They didn't know how big it was going to get. They didn't know it was going to be a graphic novel. I feel like Griffin stuck to very classic D&D &D things, uh, which is great to do when you're a new DM. And just in general, classic D&D &D stuff is great when you're DMing. It's really fun. There's rescue missions in this. There's some goblins. Um, it's not that deep, the story um, in this one. It's, it's kind of very surface level. And, and that's fine, and that's great, and if you're thinking about starting a D&D campaign because it's getting like this huge resurgence, and please fucking do, and please message me if you're not sure, just like, I will push you into it. I've started DMing, and I love it, and I've been told I'm good by a biased member of my party, so. But what I wanted to say is that this story gets fucking deep, like really, really deep. I'm almost done. I actually haven't finished the podcast yet. I'm bad at finishing things. Gotta get a little too emotional. And I was listening to it today and I was like, 
like tearing up at the fucking grocery store listening to this podcast because it just comes so full circle. All of the arcs get way more interesting. They, d they get a little bit more complex. And, um... Even the next one gets a little bit more complex. I also read the second one this month. <laughs> this was a uh, Murder on the Lo Rockport Limited this month, last month, July, because it's August 15th. This is like a murder mystery on a train, but also Dungeons and Dragons. I think so much of what it is, it's a mix of like two things that are very important to me right now. And one of them is Dungeons and Dragons, which sounds very silly, but the world is kind of shitty and uh, a lot of things in it can get really shitty and I'm part of two campaigns and a couple times a month I can sit down and just fucking be someone else and <laughs> it's really phenomenal. And the McElroys are people who have gotten me through some of like the most difficult like mental spaces that I've been in and I find them so comforting at this point. If I'm ever feeling kind of down, I, I think I default to Monster Factory, but sometimes I'll just put on one of their other podcasts and just hearing them joking around and telling stories and being silly and great just kind of just puts me in this better spot and I relax and um this is too deep for me. I'm not drunk enough for this. Listen, I like to pretend that I don't have emotions, okay? I'm just one of those people, but I'm very emotional. I just don't want to talk about it. So yeah, if you were thinking about continuing with The Adventure Zone and you were feeling kind of iffy, start the podcast, keep going through the podcast, listen to like 10 episodes. I know that's a lot. I know I'm really asking you for a lot, but if you like Dungeons and Dragons, fuck, it's really delightful. And the next, like, the next graphic novel, if they go in order, should be uh, Petals to the Metal, which, huh, my god, that was a great arc, and it's like, it's like a combination of, like, Speed Racer and Mad Max, which is two of my favorite things in the world. So, yeah, now that I've wasted this entire wrap-up talking about the McElroys, what else did I read? Next up, I decided to read something short, and I read All Systems Red by Martha Wells. Uh, this is the first book in the Murder Dot. Murder Dot. Why do I try? This is the first book in the Murderbot Diaries. It was fucking great. <laughs> like, holy shit. I didn't know much about it. So this is from the point of view of a robot who has kind of like hacked her own like system and she can now do whatever the fuck she wants. And she decides she's gonna watch a lot of TV. <laughs> it's like the most relatable shit I've ever seen in a goddamn book. It's, it's very short and I, I bought the other two again compulsive. This is wonderful. Uh, it's a comedic kind of science fiction, which I really liked because I feel like I do enjoy science fiction like in theory, but it's a little heavy and I'm very dumb. So adding a comedic spin to it, just my thing. So I decided to continue with like the beat the slump thing that Sarah and I started last year and or last year. We came up with last year and I was in another slump so I thought I'd try it again. And the next part was doing a reread, so I decided to reread Downsiders by Neil Shusterman. I read this when I was a kid. Uh, I distinctly remember reading this as a kid. I don't remember what age I was. It was so fun to reread. <laughs> um, I think a lot of, a lot of tropes, a couple of tropes I really like, uh, I think kind of stem from me reading this as a kid. And the fact that it stuck with me so vividly says a lot. It's a fairly simple novel but uh, very well done and creative. And it is about a society of people who live underground in New York City and they are called downsiders. And the protagonist, Talon, has to uh, go to the surface, which is against the rules, but his sister is sick and he is trying to steal like antibiotics and he runs into a girl, what was her name? Lindsay. He runs into a girl, Lindsay, and they kind of uh, are very fascinated by each other. And I'm really into like hidden underground societies and I think that that stems from this book. I really enjoy that kind of very specific trope. By the way, I really want to do a video about like weirdly specific things I like in books, which Kayla did one time in a video. Side note, hopefully I get to that some fucking day. I love Neil Shusterman. You can really see, I don't know, you can see the beginnings of a lot of things he still does just in this book and he's developed so phenomenally as a writer. And I want to read more and more of his stuff, because a lot of the stuff I read by him is a bit older. Although I do have Scythe and Thunderhead. I bought them both. 
because I'm compulsive. Next up I read Wild Seed by Octavia E. Butler. I buddy read this with Sue from Spinebreakers. We were both very bad at buddy reading this, so cheers Sue. We made it, eventually. It took me a little while to get into it, and then once I did, I just fucking sat down and read like the whole goddamn thing. Once again, Octavia E. Butler blew my fucking mind, and I remember I was just like, I finished this book, and I was just like, walking around my house, like, not even knowing what to do. I started talking to myself, I think, because I wanted to talk about the book with someone, and Sue wasn't done yet, and I was like, huh, what do I do? But this is about a woman who has lived a very long time because she has, like, kind of complete control over her body. If she has an illness, she can find it and fix it. She doesn't age. She has lived for several hundred years, and she meets a man who is kind of, uh, also inhuman in a way. He can take other people's bodies and he just kind of jumps to bodies and he's been living for much longer than her and he is sort of like farming people with magical powers and trying to create like superhuman shit. Octavia E. Butler does the like morally gray thing so well and this gave me very strong Lilith Brood vibes in just that no one was completely right or completely wrong in what they were doing and it'll hurt you but it's so good and interesting and fuck. Next up I was continuing with the you know get beat the slump. I picked Missing Presumed Dead by Emma Burquist because uh, you know it's kind of like a mystery. I'd heard there was a female female romance. It sounded good. That has everything I like. This is about a uh, young woman named Lexi who, she has a couple of abilities. One is that she can see ghosts and kind of like interact with them and she can also like send them like to the beyond. Woo! And she also, if she touches someone, she sees how they die. Literally every time she touches them though. It's not like she touches someone once and sees how they die and that's it. No! If they touch her again, she gets to see all over again how they die. So Lexi kind of works like at this bar run by a guy who sort of takes in, they call them witches, uh, people with special abilities. And he kind of, uh, they work at this club and also they do jobs for him. And in turn they get paid and they get his protection. And one night Lexi is at work and she bumps into a young woman at the club and sees that she's going to die that night. But she can't do anything to stop it. She can't like cheat death. People are gonna die when they're gonna die. So Jane, the young woman she sees die, comes and starts to like kind of haunt her and asks Lexi for help in finding who killed her. This has a romance between Lexi and Jane and I have found, again, something I would put in the video of like weirdly specific specific things I love. I really like romances between a human and a ghost. Like I fucking love it. I love it so much. So overall I felt like this book, uh, it was fun. It was a good fun popcorny read. There are definitely some dark themes. For the most part, this book isn't doing anything super revolutionary and groundbreaking, and I don't think it was trying to. The writing is fairly simple, the characters are simple, and the plot is really simple. And those things sound like negatives, but personally, I need books like this sometimes. Every book I read like had me spiraling out of control for every single character, I would just drop dead. I can't handle that. Like my heart doesn't have the capacity. It would just shut down. I'm a cruel bitch. So every once in a while I need a book like this one. It, it, it was just, I, I liked it. <laughs> I think I gave it four stars. I think a lot of people would probably give it maybe three in that it was just okay. But it was just, it was a very good like shut off my brain, just kind of enjoy this, let it solve the mystery for me. I, I'm not gonna try to think about who the killer is. I don't care. Just tell me. This romance isn't it's like kind of cute, but I also didn't like get all that much from either of the characters, but it was fine. Like it was just, I enjoyed them. I think this is a great October read if you're thinking about something. If this sounds interesting to you, if you want to kind of shut off your brain, just enjoy the, enjoy the simplistic, ghosty murder mystery that has a female female romance, then definitely, yes, pick this up in October. I read one more book and I don't own it. I listened to this audiobook and I had to write it on a fucking piece of paper and put it at the bottom of the book pile because I was pretty sure I would forget. So the last book I read, I read with Deb and I listened to the audiobook and it was The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know a dude wrote this. And I felt a little like I'd been tripped into reading and enjoying a book written by a man. The Girl with All the Gifts is a book that uh, fucking y'all read already. 
So should I tell you what it's about? Probably not, right? Girl with all the gifts is about a young girl who is a zombie and she kind of is a little bit more intelligent than other zombies. She can kind of learn things and she can recite things and she has thoughts and emotions and and all that like and she seems to be experimented on. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit of detail with this book so slight spoilers for like I would say a third of the way through. Um, I'm not gonna spoil anything major but if you like really don't like knowing anything then um, definitely skip ahead <laughs> so when the picture is gone. Because uh, this has <laughs> so many tropes that I really like but what it really did by the way this was five stars I fucking loved this book and I was nervous to read it because I saw so many like eh, it was okay reviews and I'm gonna be honest let me drink first I think I have to start fucking ignoring all y'all when you review horror novels because we don't see eye to eye at all I think part of my enjoyment comes from the fact that I listened to the audiobook it went by a lot faster when I did because I listened to it at twice the speed. Uh, although at first I had to slow down a little bit because she was very British and I needed like a minute. But this book went from like, like, ooh, okay. So it starts in like this kind of creepy like prison school area and then it goes on to traveling and I love traveling in books and Deb made fun of me for this because I pointed out every goddamn time you read a book that has traveling. I love it. And not only had traveling though, it had traveling in a post-apocalyptic setting with an unlikely group of travelers. I fucking love that shit. <laughs> this is another one that really tested you with morally gray characters. Again, most people weren't completely right or completely wrong. So anyway, uh, yeah, I liked, uh, I liked the girl with all the gifts. I've been thinking about doing a video, by the way. Let's just like, let's lounge. Let's talk about, like, let's talk about life. How are you? How is everybody? I'm really lounging. Let's get down here. Let's get low. I'm thinking about doing a video where like I <laughs> find kind of horror novels that I think sound interesting to me and then looking up the reviews and if the reviews are kind of shitty like reading it anyway and then kind of seeing how that goes. Does that sound interesting? I don't know if that's interesting because I have found that like I have very differing views on horror novels. <laughs> like if someone reviews a book and they're like "Ooh, one star this is the weirdest thing I've ever read. I'm like what? What is it? What was it? Let me write it down. Sign me up. That shit sounds great. Weirdest thing you've ever read. I want to read it. It probably isn't that weird. Y'all have low standards for weird. That's all I'm saying. I wish it were October. <laughs> Partly because I love Halloween and autumn and also I think I'm quitting my job in October. So I'll have more time to do things. Whether or not I'll actually do them, that remains to be seen.